Welcome back chemistry students, Dr. Tullis here. We are moving on to the next section where you're going to be doing some more calculating of equilibrium constants. And we're going to look at equilibrium constants when we know initial concentrations and we will need to get to the equilibrium concentrations. Here's where we're going. When the concentrations of all the reactants and products are known at equilibrium, an equilibrium constant can be calculated by substituting the data into the equilibrium constant expression. When we had our K is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants and raised to the value of whatever that stoichiometric coefficient is. More commonly, however, an experiment will provide information on the initial quantities of reactants and the concentration at equilibrium of only one of the reactants or one of the products. The equilibrium concentrations for the rest of the reactants and products must then be calculated based on the reaction stoichiometry. After writing the equilibrium constant expression in terms of concentrations, we set up what we are going to call an ice table showing the initial concentrations, the changes in those concentrations, and the concentrations at equilibrium. Let's do an example. Here we have a chemical reaction. We're told that we have two moles of NOCO3 added to a one liter flask. At equilibrium, the concentration of NO, one of the products, is found to be 0.66 moles per liter. What is the value of K? First of all, I'm going to write my K expression. K is equal to the concentration of our products over reactants. Let's look at our products. One product is NO, so concentration of NO squared times the concentration of Cl divided by my reactants, so concentration of NOCl squared. Now we need to draw a table. This is our ice table. We're going to show our initial, our change, and our equilibrium. And it's fine if you want to abbreviate, I like to just do this. I-C-E for initial, change, and equilibrium concentrations. When we are plugging everything into our K and we want to find the value of K, all of these values have to be equilibrium values. We don't know equilibrium values right off the bat. We're told that we have two moles of NOCl in one liter. To get molarity, it's moles divided by liters. So two divided by one is two moles per liter. So that's the first thing I'm plugging in to my initial concentration for NOCl. I'm told that two moles per liter. Now, that is my only reactant. So that is the only thing I'm going to have. I have no products formed initially. So maybe we even want to draw a line to show this is my reactants. These are my products. I initially have two moles per liter and I have no products. Now we're told that at equilibrium, the concentration of NO is 0.66. So how did we get from 0 to 0.66? My change, I must have had an increase of 0.66. Notice that this has two in front of it. So I essentially added 2x. This does not have any number in front of it, so we're just going to say x. I lost between my reactants and products. Reactants turn into products. So I'm going to lose reactants, so I lose some sort of x. And because there's a 2 in front of it, I'm going to say my change is minus 2x. My change here is I'm going to say plus 2x, and here I'm just going to say plus x. So 0 plus 2x equals 0.66. 0 plus 2x equals 0.66. I can then solve for x, right? I could do, I could subtract 0 from both sides, that gets rid of that. Divide both sides by 2. 0.66 divided by 2 x is equal to 0.33. So 2 times 0.33 obviously is 0.66. That is my equilibrium value of NO. Now that I know what x is over here, I said, well, I gained some product, not 2x, but just x, because there's only one there. 
So I'm going to say plus 0.33, so my equilibrium value here is 0.33. And over here, I lost reactant. Actually, I lost 2x. We said x was 0.33, so 2 minus 0.66 would give me a value of 1.34. I now know all of my equilibrium values and can plug it into that K expression, products over reactants. And O, so I'm going to put 0.66 squared times 0.33 all divided by 1.34 squared. And I get a K value of 0 0.080. Let's do another. I'm told that I have the oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. So I wrote my equation out here, sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. I need to balance my equation here. There we go. Suppose that 0 0.00100 moles each of SO2 and O2 are placed in a one liter flask at high temperature. So I'm told how much I initially have. So I'm going to set up my ice table here. Initial change in concentration at equilibrium. Initially, I'm told that I have this many moles per one liter, so this number divided by one is that number. So that's 0 .00, and I have the same amount of both of those. So I'm going to draw a line separating both of my reactants, 0 .00100 of both. And I'm going to draw a line separating my products. These are my reactants. At initial time zero, I have no product formed. I lose reactants and I gain products. So I'm going to lose reactants. I'm going to gain products. How much am I going to lose? Well, I'm going to lose twice as much SO2 because I have twice as much because of the stoichiometric coefficient. So I'm going to lose 2x here. I'm going to lose x here. And over on the right here, because of that 2, I'm going to gain 2x. Okay, now let's see if we're given something at equilibrium. When equilibrium has been achieved, this many, 0 0.00054 moles of SO3 has been formed. Again, that's moles in 1 liter. So that divided by 1, which is the same concentration. That has been formed. Let us use this information to calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Our equilibrium constant, products over reactants. So we need to find the concentration of SO3 squared divided by the concentration of SO2 squared times the concentration of O2. All at equilibrium. These values are what I need to plug into that expression. While I'm told the SO3, I have to find the others. So let's find out what x is so that I can do the math. I know that 0 plus 2x equals 0 0.00054. Okay, well that 0 we can just neglect. Let's divide both sides by 2. I got 0 0.00027. Okay, knowing what x equals, let's find out what this equilibrium value and what this equilibrium value is and plug in our x value. So I'm going to do this oxygen one first. 0 0.001 minus x, 0 0.00027. What does that give us? Did you get 0 0.00073? Now let's plug in for SO2. I would put 0 0.001 minus 2 times x. Did you get 0 0.00046? Okay, knowing all of these values at equilibrium, let's plug that into K. Here I wrote it, K is equal to, this is my products over reactants, and when I did the math, I got 1,887.7. I went back at my original problem, I have three sig figs there, three sig figs there, and two sig figs here, so I'm going to finish with two sig figs. One eight, that eight will round that eight up to a nine, so I'm going to make that 1900, zero, zero, so 1900, or you could say 1 1.9 times 10 to the third power. Either one of those, that would be my equilibrium constant. Let's do another example. We've got an aqueous solution of iron 3 ions reacting with iodide ions to give iron 3 ions and triiodide ions. 
Okay, so we have two reactants giving me two different products. Let's set up our ice table since we're given initial concentrations right off the bat. And I'm going to separate each of my reactants and products. Suppose the initial concentration of Fe3 plus ions is 0.2 molar. The initial iodide concentration is 0.3 molar. When equilibrium has been achieved, the concentration of the iodide ions is 0 0.0866. What is the value of Kc? Okay, first of all, I'm gonna write my Kc expression. Our products over reactants, so my products, so I'm gonna take the concentration of the Fe plus two ions squared times the concentration of my iodide ions divided by the concentration of my Fe three plus ions squared times the concentration of the I minus ions cubed. Let's plug in some other things that we know. We know that these are my reactants and at time zero I have no products. I am given one equilibrium value. To go from zero to 0 0.0866 and then I have no coefficient here, I had to add x. We can look at this and go, oh, x is equal to 0 0.0866, isn't it? Because 0 plus what is 0 0.0866? Let's look at our stoichiometric coefficients. Again, I lose reactants, I gain products. Here I'm going to minus 2x. Here I'm going to lose 3x. Here I'm going to gain 2x, and this was just 1, so I'm gaining x. Let's plug in our x value to all of our change in concentrations to find the equilibrium. So let's do the iron 3 plus ions, 0.2 minus 2, and x is 0 0.0866. Let's figure out that one, and 0.3 minus 3x, and let's do the last one, 0 plus 2x. Why don't you pause the video here and find those equilibrium concentrations. Did you get these equilibrium values? 0 0.0268, 0 0.0402, 0 0.1732, 0 0.0866. Pause the video here and plug these equilibrium values into our expression. Let's see if we get the same k value. When I plugged it into the calculator, I got 55,675. I went back to my original problem. I have three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. So I'm gonna end with three. One, two, three, that seven. We'll round that six to a seven. So five, five, seven, zero, zero. Or we could write in scientific notation, 5.57 times 10 to the fourth power. Remember, K has no units. Let's look at another example. We have a solution prepared by dissolving 0.05 moles of diodocyclohexane, that's our reactant, our only reactant, in the solvent carbon tetrachloride. The total volume is one liter, so we can find that concentration. By taking our moles divided by one liter will give us our concentration in molarity. When it has come to equilibrium, the concentration of I2 is this. See if you can set up an ice table. Just pause the video here for a minute. We'll come back together. Maybe this is all you have. When you set up your table, we were told that initial concentration of C6H10I2. I'm also told at equilibrium, so down here, at equilibrium, my I2 concentration, 0 0.035. That's all we need to find the rest of these boxes because this is my only reactant. And we know when we start a concentration, initially I have no products formed. Now, all of these stoichiometric coefficients are one, so I'm going to lose reactant, I'm going to gain product. Now I can find x. Zero plus x is 0 0.035. That means x is 0 0.035. So zero plus x is also going to give me 0 0.035. And then I just need to take my 0 0.05 minus 0 0.035, which would be 0 0.015 at equilibrium. I know all of those values are. Those concentrations at equilibrium are those three. Let's find Kc, the equilibrium constant. Products over reactants. So K is going to be equal to the concentration of C6H10 
times the concentration of I2 all over the concentration of C6H10I2. All of those have the coefficients of 1. So let's take my 0 0.035 times it by 0 0.035 and divide it by 0 0.015. And I got a value of 0 0.082. This value is less than 1. Remember, if I have a k value of less than 1, it is very reactant favored. In this last problem, I had a very big k value, so it was very product favored. It wanted to go to the right.